I well, hope you enjoy the music. Yes. I'm having a lot of fun myself. <laughs> <laughs> this is nice. So, um, thank you. We'll have a, some more music for you in a minute. I want to um, share a beautiful verse, quite familiar. Um, Isaiah, the sixth chapter, excuse me, the ninth chapter, verses six to seven. A very familiar verse, as there the ninth chapter, verse six, verses six and seven. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now the increase of his government and peace, there will be no end upon the throne of David and over his kingdom to order it with justice from that time forward, even forevermore. For the zeal of the Lord will perform this. And when I think about these words, I um, wonder if I can be caught up in the rhythm of his life. Because we're talking about Jesus. You know, if I'm not careful, I can miss the singing of the angels. I can let that be crowded out by all of the other stuff that goes on about Christmas. If I'm not careful, I might miss the sweetness of his soft voice. You know, when the Lord broke the mountains in uh, 1 Kings 19th chapter, a great sound on the mountains great fire, and even a great earthquake. But the scripture says that God was not in the fire, not in the earthquake. But he came in the form of a still, small voice. Sometimes we have to be very still to hear the voice of the Lord, to not miss the um, beautiful meaning of Christmas, despite the beautiful Christmas tree. I love those lights there. So beautiful. But they want to, we want to see that they reflect the light of the stars that shine over Bethlehem that long, those long years ago. So the question of, will I be caught up in the rhythm of his life? In fact, until I am, I've not heard the music of the spheres. I've not really heard what God would have me to hear. I've not heard the simple cadence of the ancient psalms or the lyric beauty of a thousand years. Frankly, I don't see how people can go through this season and just not care the slightest bit about the meaning even of the name Christmas with the word Christ in it. How can I be caught up in the rhythm of his life? How can I not miss the rhythm of his life? If I miss it, I've not seen the loveliness of the dawn across the lifted hills, the gold and the gray of winter sunsets, or the moonlight's hush upon the sleeping world, even the glory of nature's special. Even the mystery and the beauty of nature's special touch. Jesus, that's our prayer, whose love rekindles the ashes of our aching hearts. Be now the goal of our best desires, the light from which our longings will never depart. Let him be the center of our, of our universe. And even at this time where we have the great celebrations, we recognize there some sadness. I have a friend named um, Virginia Renko. She happens to be a minister. But three Christmases, well, I should say Christmas seasons in December, she had great tragedies. One 
Christmas season she lost her son. Another Christmas season she lost her mother. And then the third Christmas season she lost her husband. All of that was dearest to her in life. Was taken, was taken away from her during Christmas time. So she comes to this season, yes, she can have a, a full heart of sadness, but her heart is joyful. You know, not counting what she's lost, but what God still continues to supply in her life. And therefore, her prayer, like ours, is Jesus, whose love rekindles those dying fires that flicker from ashes from our aching hearts. You know, we can lose things. Our hearts ache. Our hearts ache. The fire, the fire goes out. But the birth of Christ can rekindle, rekindle that. And the prayer was asked that he would be our, be the goal of our best desires, the light from which our longings never depart to heal our aching hearts. Yes, even in a time of challenge and difficulty, we can still sing as the angels sing, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. Let us be caught up in the rhythm of his life. Hear the canticles, the songs of praise that the angels sang, that hope be born again even from the ashes of the dying flame. A word of prayer with you. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 6 says that his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Almighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And no matter what is undone about us, the world could be a plan, and I think it is sometimes. All the unrest in our evil world, the sadness that buffets us from side to side, that is reflecting the babe in the manger that still brings peace to our trouble in our trying world. Lord, we do pray for everyone here today. We know not what they go through. We know Christmas can be a time of sadness. But let it also be a time of gladness, reflecting on your grace that is still sufficient for each of our days. We may not have all that we want, but you provide those things that we truly need. May Christmas be well and alive in our hearts, and when the Christmas bells start, stop to ring, when the, Christmas, when the Christmas tree is taken down, may this be the beginning and the continuation of this beautiful season of joy and peace. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let us praise him and bury our own sadness with praise as did the angels. Glory to God in the highest and that peace. May that peace trickle down to every heart here and every heart far, far near. For we ask it in the name of Jesus, the reason for the season. Peace Amen. Amen. Amen.